Oh no, Soros isn't dressing as starter or backup tonight. Oh my god, there goes any chance of a long playoff run, Johnny. What? Let, 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 me, let me see your phone. Why do I let myself get my hopes up with this team? Uh, Jersey guy, read the first reply. Oh. Everybody's hands go up, way up, as the Nashville Predators defeat the Chicago Blackhawks by a score of 5-5. To one Friday night inside the United Center in Chicago, Illinois. Hey, Preds Nation, Johnny here. Game 80 of the season as the Preds step one game closer to finishing the regular season and getting ready for the playoffs. This is going to be a one taker because it was a later game, and I do have my early start for my shift at my day job on. Saturday, so I'm going to get this out to you so that I can be well rested for work and then be ready for a more intense recap. The home finale of the regular season, it's not the home finale overall because we're going to have home playoff games in Bridgestone Arena. So let me crank this out, but hey, let me not discount how big of a game this was. Coming into this game, as you saw in the intro that I discussed, it raised some attention. I saw it after the fact, so I didn't get too worried. I wonder how many of you got stressed out at first when it was announced that Troy Groshenik, who is actually the four-string goalie on a depth chart, Askarov's backup in Milwaukee was called up to be Kevin Lankinen's backup. Smart of the Preds, no reason to play Saros in this mean-nothing game, game 80 of the season, against, yes, Arch rival Chicago Blackhawks, but you don't want to risk injury like how two seasons ago when the Preds were chasing down a playoff spot right until the very end and then Soros got hurt. And yeah, we probably still would have lost to Colorado in the first round, but maybe Soros would have won a game or two, making it a respectable series. But now, as we inch closer and closer to getting into the playoffs and seeing who we're playing, a healthy Sarles should make a series of it. But hey, that being said, Lankinen played solid. What did he What did he make? He made 25 saves in this game. I'm going to get to the best part at the end. Don't think I'm going to leave it out. The Preds' penalty kill could be a little bit more disciplined. They were taking a few too many. Fortunately, it was the Blackhawks, so it didn't really make the Preds pay. The one goal the Blackhawks scored was on a 5-on-3. The rest of the game, the Preds played solid. They went 3-for-3 three three on the power play. Yes, I'm just che double-checking. And most important of all, we didn't have to wait one game longer. There's a new franchise leader in single-season goal record for the Preds, and I wore his jersey for the occasion, Philip Forsberg. He got goal 44 to break Matt Duchesne's record. The man who wanted to retire as a Pred, if you ask the general manager, not win, got his contract bought out, and we'll see if we play him in the first round. Forsberg didn't stop with 44. He got 45, and then he got 46. What a season for Forsberg. It's his 10th career hat trick. By the end of his career, this cannot be said enough. His number nine will hang in the Bridgestone Arena rafters with number 35. I assume 59 will be up there by then as well. I only hope the Preds succeed in what they failed at with number 35. And when number nine is hanging up there, he has a ring, Stanley Cup ring, to go along with it. Now, I'm glad that overall the penalty kill could be a little bit more worked on, more disciplined. But what I am thankful for, as we saw with people who were rested in this game, is nobody got hurt, even though it was division rival Chicago. Coming into this game, Gustav Nyquist and Ryan McDonough, along with Saros, were healthy scratch, giving Luki Van Jolista time on the first line with Philip Forsberg and Ryan O'Reilly. He has earned it. 
man alive in two more seasons, assuming Gustav Nyquist's contract expires and he's not brought back. By that time, Evangelista will have earned time on that number one line. And hey, maybe if we're lucky and the transition of power eventually, when Forsberg eventually retires, we're a long way off from that. The torch will be passed and Luke Evangelista will have a race on his hands because in a season or two, that kid, the way he's working this year, he builds on some muscle onto that frame. He's going to get 30 goals, 40 easily, easily. That kid has so much bunk. We saw how he played against St. Louis and he, his game has taken so many advances forward. If it wasn't for a guy named Connor Bedard, Luke Evangelista might be more discussed in the Calder race. But hey, that'll just make him more of a surprise when he takes another leap next year. Now, as for the Preds, game 80 done. As for the standings, I'll bring that up quick as a reminder because Vegas is still beating Minnesota with St. Louis, who has been eliminated, assuming Vegas when St. Louis will have been eliminated from the playoffs. Nashville is in wild card spot number one. They have 97 points. Vegas will be in wild card spot number two with 94 points, one game in hand. Assuming they have that, it'll be one point back of Nashville. I know all of the NHL analytic sites still have the Preds favored to be in wild card spot number one once everybody gains 82 games. As for who their opponent might be, it's still going to be a close call. Dallas is in first overall in the West. If Nashville finishes off in wild card spot number one, it will not be Dallas that they face. It will be the winner of the Pacific Division. While it took one step closer to it being a rematch of the 2011 second round for the Preds, as Arizona, sympathy to their fans if they see this for what they're going through right now. It hits a little close to home as my brother is an Arizona Coyotes fan. Not very happy with how that all shook out about how they're moving to Utah. But Arizona potentially did the Canucks a favor and we'll see if they, you know, in essence did the Preds a favor if they pull an upset when the first round comes along because Arizona beating Edmonton in overtime increases the chances that the Canucks will finish in first in the Pacific Division. If the Oilers want any chance to be that number one team in that division and face the Preds, if they were to finish first in wild card spot, they play the Canucks at home in Edmonton Saturday night. They need to win that game in regulation and give the Canucks zero points. As for the Preds, they will go home to face Columbus tomorrow night for the home regular season finale before finishing off against Pittsburgh on the road in Pittsburgh on Monday. Columbus, nothing to play for. Pittsburgh is still fighting tooth and nail with their claws for one of the last wildcard spots in the Metro in the Eastern Conference. I would assume Bruno would still be doing some line shuffling, giving guys some rest. I know what some people might say is that you don't want Forsberg to have too much time off because the Preds, like I said, home finale Saturday, last game Monday, and they won't be playing a playoff game till at least the 20th, which is five days after the regular season ends for them when people are still playing regular season games Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday next week. Maybe if Forsberg can say pull off another hat trick tomorrow, you give him the benefit of the doubt, you let him play Monday to try and go for 50. What an accomplishment that would be for him and the franchise. But I don't want to risk injury to the number one goal scorer that will be counted on by this team, this fan base to possibly pull an upset in the first round and see what happens after that. But... Hey, I'll trust it to the professionals and I'll trust it to Forsberg for how he feels. But I would assume there'll still be some rest. Sarl should play tomorrow at home. And then 
possibly give him Monday off and just, you know, have some good practices so that the guys will feel fresh and be ready for whoever game one is against. Like I said again, least chance it being Dallas. Don't ask me who I want. Most likely Vancouver or maybe even Edmonton. So that is it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. As always, game 80 of the regular season is in the books. Click a like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really like it. You can find my social media and interact with me during every Preds game, regular season, and soon to be NHL playoffs by clicking on a channel name. Tell all your friends about Redemption and Preds Nation. Again, tell all your friends that fill up Forsberg is the single season goal king for the Nashville Predators.